Right, what I figured we could do now, let's quit out that, as I'm still going to stream for maybe an hour or so. Oh, the desk is such a mess. From top down. I was rooting through my PC Engine games and other games that can use the um, analog pocket adapters. So we can pick something from this box and we can check it out. So what do we want to play? Well, what do you guys want to play? Let me know if let me know if you see anything interesting and we can we can check it out on the analog pocket. Someone said that's their favorite PC engine game, so we might play that one. Um that's something that I got off a friend recently. Kai Kai, which is a very expensive game, so maybe we can check that one out. Shockman 2, Shubibin Man, kind of Mega Man style uh, action game. Raiden's a good one. My favourite vertical scrolling shooter for the PC Engine. Newtopia is an interesting Zelda style game. Yeah, maybe Shockman 2, and then we can have a look at the links and. Uh, other games, if I go back on camera. There's a bunch more, there's a bunch more Hue cards that I've got as well. Uh, it's going to be hard to see because they're all Japanese, but there's a stack there. Maybe we can check out, actually. Oh yeah, I've got some UK releases too. They're always interesting to see. Yeah, I've got it actually. Shot one zero up here. There's the uh, the sequel on the SNES, or the Super Famicom. Got the official release in Japan when it came out. I don't think it's in there though, but still really cool to have. I didn't really play it as much as I would have liked either, but I'll leave that out. Um, yeah, what I was going to say is these are actually UK releases for the Turbo Graphics, which is always really cool because it was very hard to find. There's the box for. Shockman Zero, or well, Shockman Two, sorry. And the annoying thing with PC Engine games is you can't tell what the game's like unless you already know because it doesn't have any pictures on the back. Um, obviously, these are awesome games as well on Hue cards. We can take a look at them. I'll put them out. Street Fighter Two is a really interesting port with, if it's in here, an interesting Hue card because it's actually slightly thicker. If you compare it to a normal one, like so, really good port, like rivals the SNES and Mega Drive. Uh, what else have we got here? We've got Shubivin Man One, which we can also check out. The first one's not that good though, but maybe it'll be interesting to have a look at at least. Uh, it's got some nice artwork on there. That's probably enough for tonight anyway, but maybe I'll do... I haven't even opened this one yet. Genpei Tomodem. There was a sequel to this not long ago on the Switch. Oh, there's there's a good game. Don Dokodon. I didn't know this was going to be turning into a PC Engine showcase, but... I love the PC Engine. Uh, let's see, anything else interesting? Mm, not really. Not really from that set. Right, there's a bunch of other ones here as well. There's the box art for Kiki Kai Kai. Look how nice that cover is. Love that. Yay, hey, Ben Stylus is here. Unfortunately, you uh, caught me right at the end of the stream for the game that we were actually playing, so we've actually finished that now. That was that was Trip World DX. So hopefully everyone enjoyed that. I'm actually going to change the... Uh, There we go. I've just updated Twitch, so it doesn't say we're playing Trip World anymore. Soldier Blade is an awesome game. We can check that one out. That's like an insanely cool shoot 'em up, as well as Gunhead. 
Gunhead's awesome too. Proteus. What else have we got here? That's probably enough anyway. Titan's interesting. Twin B. Great port of Twin B. Bomberman 93, the first PC Engine or Turbo Graphics game that I ever played. We can start with Airzonk. Let's start with Airzonk. Let's put these, put these back over there for now. Oh, my, my room is such a mess at the minute. Right. Look at the floor. Just a mess. You probably can't tell because the camera's a bit uh, zoomed out. Anyway. Uh, do I even have any space for the top down camera? It looks clean, but yeah, stuff everywhere. Let's get these back over. There. So, here we go. First one. The really annoying thing about these is you can't tell which one's for which console. Like, they all look more or less the same. You have to, like, squint in the bottom left there next to where it's got that big number two. You can just about make out what system it is. So that one says Neo Geo Pocket Color. This one says Lynx. That one is Game Gear. There we go. That is the PC Engine one. So let's start with Air Zonk, or the more awesome Japanese name, Punkix Cyborgs. What a cool name. So let's put that in there. I think it goes that way around. And put that in there. It might go the other way around, actually. Let's see if it recognizes it. It does. And there's an annoying sticker on the back. But there you go. That's what it looks like. It knows what it is. It says it's Turbo Graphics 16, even though technically it's PC Engine. And the game looks like that in the back. So it is kind of silly the way it sticks out at the top. It's definitely not as nice as the uh, PC Engine GT or something like that, but anyway. Let's put it on the dock. It should pop up. There we go. And now it's going to feel really weird playing a PC Engine game using a SNES controller. But let's go. Yeah, I was thinking actually it might be a good idea to get like a marker or maybe a sticker, a sticker to go over it or something. There we go. Can you hear the game okay? This game's awesome, by the way. Such a unique style to it. Punkick Cyborgs. How cool is that name as well? Punkick Cyborgs. I love it. I love it so much. Use the labeler for the converters. Yeah. Not sure what that says. Listen to the awesome music. such a crazy game as well. Oh yeah, let's see what options we've got. So, I guess settings, pocket, systems, so it knows what system it is straight away. And then I guess you've got the same as what you've got for the uh, Game Boy as well. You've got video options, display mode, analog TG16, which is like their preferred mode, I guess. CRT Trinitron filter. Interesting. Let's see what that looks like. Quite nice. I don't know how well that comes across on stream, because obviously there's a bit of scaling going on, but... I don't remember what any of the power-ups are. That one seems like some sort of homing attack. Let's see what other options we've got here. That's a really nice CRT filter, actually. Uh, we've also got Turbo Express. So for those of you that don't know, the Turbo Express is the uh, handheld version of the Turbo Graphics, and then the LT is like the, the tabletop mode where it lifts up. Interesting. You can see how the background is changing, so it changes between the different styles. That's pretty cool. So Turbo Express obviously doesn't look that great, but I guess it's authentic. Oh, okay, that's on my side. 
That's kind of hurt my eyes a little bit though. Let's try the LT one as well. Looks a little nicer. And I have played on both and I have to say these are quite um, lifelike, obviously. Apart from the size because I'm playing this on a massive like 30 inch monitor in front of my face. Uh, but for now let's just go back on analog TG16. We can check out the other options. We have RGB or composite. So do you want the brighter colours of RB, uh, RGB or do you want the more washed out colours of a composite cable? And I guess you can merge them with the uh, CR... Oh wow, there's a load of other options too. So yeah, with the CRT as well you can choose do you want RGB or composite, which is cool. And then you've also got all these different options here. Stretch CRT width. Did that make any difference? I don't know if that made any difference. Didn't seem to. Um, you can change the aperture grill settings. So that's basically the the lines in between the pixels and the CRT. So you can kind of see it changing. I don't know whether you guys can tell on Twitch because it's quite small. Scan lines only. Which will get rid of the rest of the CRT filters and just keep the lines in between. Which looks quite nice if you want that retro look without the phosphor emulation. <laughs> Leg grill? What the hell is that? <laughs> uh, what else we got? Hard edges or soft edges. I guess that just smooths out the pixels. You can kind of see. And heavy scan lines. I don't really like scan lines that much anyway, so I don't know why you would want heavy scan lines. That just hurts my eyes at this point. Um, so... I'm not sure what that one does, I guess. Maybe you mix that with, uh, with a different one. I would say... That that's probably my preferred settings. Or maybe the fine one, let's see. I quite like the medium one. It gives it kind of an authentic feel. Basically, depending on the size of a CRT, you'd get a different type of aperture grill. So soft edges, medium aperture grill, and I guess composite. And you've also got the option for frame blending too, like you did on the Game Boy. Although frame blending wasn't really used as a development trick on consoles, so you probably want to turn that off. You've also got the option to show overscan, which is pretty cool, and PC Engine did utilise overscan sometimes, so it might be cool to have that turned on actually if you want a little bit of a bigger field of view. Although obviously it's not really authentic having the CRT filter on if you're using the overscan because a lot of that area would get cut off. It's great they've included so many options though. Really nice. I just realised I don't think I actually have any of the Bonk platformers, even though I really love those games. I've only got Bonk Cyborgs. Um, yeah, as far as I know, any Game Boy game that took advantage of the screen flicker, if you put on frame blending, it does work properly. Because it's a proper FPGA implementation, so it works exactly the, the same as it would do on a Game Boy. Which is one of the uh, selling points of the analog pocket, I guess. Yeah, it's really cool. The amount of detail that they've gone into to replicate everything properly is incredible. I know some people don't like Analog as a company, but I like them. I don't really mind, and I know people cry about their lack of availability, which is annoying, but I haven't had any trouble getting anything off them. You've just got to be there the minute it goes live and just keep mashing the... Mash and refresh until you get through. 
And they've done a good job at um, keeping the analog pockets in stock, which is surprising because I thought that would be one of their more limited systems. I've been considering getting the PC Engine one while that's still available. Maybe uh, when I get paid from YouTube next, I'll, I'll buy it and do a video. I don't know anything about their customer support. Is it really that bad? I haven't had a reason to ever contact them. I just like the fact that there's a company out there making really high-end retro products. It's not really something they've got much competition in. Yeah, there are some things I would like to change, but compared to anything else out there... <laughs> yeah, I need to I need to make another top games list. I need to do that Game Boy Color one. Then I can buy it. My channel's been pretty much dead this entire month because I haven't released any popular videos. Like, I've got to make some videos that I want to make too. Like, I really enjoyed making that one about the gaming museum last month, and that isn't haven't even passed a thousand views yet. Which is okay, because I just made it for me more than anything. And it was a fun day out. Oh yeah, how does this filter look on Twitch? Does it look even, or is the scaling messing it up? Because I guess this is kind of an effect you can only really appreciate if you've got it full screen. Yeah, Blueberry, that's the main thing, isn't it? I would just end up burning out if I did things to please other people all the time. And I do have to keep reminding myself, it's not all about nothing but trying to grow every single month over month. It's about sustaining it over the long term. Which is something I did struggle with, but I think I got a pretty good process now. The filters don't look great. Uh, I might turn them off then. I thought it might not because they are quite detailed and... There you go. That probably looks better for you guys. Yeah, I think if I was playing it on my own I would have the filter turned on because it does look really nice. And usually with emulators I wasn't really the kind of person to use scan lines or anything, so they must have done something right. Hey, no, no, no problem, Chrono Moogle. Thanks for coming again. Always a joy to talk to you. So, have a good rest of the day. Yeah, this music's really cool. I don't know how to fight this guy. Oh, okay, gotta fight the weird baby that comes out of its weird. What am I even looking at? It's a building with weird people coming out the windows. Ah. Peace, we did it. A hotel made of sweets with boots, maybe. Hmm. Actually, this does have kind of a Toe Gem and Earl feel to it, doesn't it? With the uh, weird 90s absurdity to everything. The actual bunk games are, are like this as well, just really crazy and out there. I need to try and get them at some point. That's something else to add to my list when we go back to Japan next. Now I'm firing teeth. Hmm. 
This is a great game to show off what the PC Engine was capable of as well. Just the amount of sprites that fly around with no slowdown. It's still really cool to see. Fight time. What are we fighting this time? It's a, a rubbish bag or a bomb. I haven't got any way of attacking behind me. What is that? It's a flaming poo pile holding a gun. Oh my god. Ah! What am I looking at this time? Okay, we got the weird... I don't even know what that helper thing is either. <laughs> it's my mess on my floor. Don't say that, it's not going to set on fire, is it? Oh, YouTube still says Trip World. I don't know how to change it on YouTube. Should have changed it on both. Oh well, people on YouTube will just have to have a surprise. I'm going to have to get rid of all that mess on my floor before you and Dean come over. Unless you fancy helping me find somewhere to put it all. I've been slowly trying to buy some plastic boxes to store some things away. So I've run out of space on the shelf. for some reason we're in a stadium. This game's definitely a little bit on the easy side compared to some of the other shooters on the system. I want to do a video just about PC Engine shoot 'em ups one day because there's so many really, really impressive shoot 'em ups on the PC Engine that need more recognition. Maybe I put it on easy mode without realising because there was a bunch of Japanese options at the start that I couldn't understand. This is new. Get to throw baseballs. Okay. I want to know how the design meetings for this game went.
Right, well, we'll leave that one there. We can move on to the next game. And I just realised that I haven't changed the title on here either. That should now say... PC Engine Games. Long pocket, that's probably too big. There we go. That might be what someone was referring to about the games not showing up right on YouTube. Alright, let's try another game. We can try. Oh, they are quite difficult to pull out as well. Like if you try and pull the game out on its own, the adapter comes out with it, which isn't great. Mercury Hero 64, hello. Well, you may have kind of caught a stream but you actually missed what the stream was originally it was it was me playing through trip world and trip world dx but now we're moving on to uh checking out some pc engine games i've got a bunch here i'm trying to decide which one to play next uh, oh yeah we can check this one out this is one that i was talking about earlier so this is like a, a Mega Man style action game that's apparently really good, but I've never really played much of it before, so let's check this one out, called Shoe Bibbin Man 2. And this one's actually got um, instructions in English for once. Although the... Uh, I've played this intro bit before again. This one's all in Japanese. So, make your own story, I guess. It does look very Mega Man though, doesn't it? It's basically, oh hey, it's Gutsman. Oh no, they're going evil. And transform! Oh, is that the story? He's, he must be a construction worker, and he was late for work. No, always, all his colleagues are really mad at him. They're really mad. Oh my god! Calm down. Oh my god! I'm sorry. I won't ever be late again. That's it. I'm done with this job. I quit. I'm going to watch the news instead. The news was saying freak appearances of giant title screens may appear in the city today. Oh my god, there's one. So think of this as a unpolished version of Mega Man, and then occasionally you'll also get some shooting levels thrown in there too. And with a weird voice sample whenever you use that charge shot. I thought for a second you'd be able to... Oh my god, you can shoot up! Wow, what an improvement over Mega Man. He wishes he could do that. Ah. ah! Oh, we've got loads of life though. Oh no, we've got an auto scroll eh? Construction man searches for a new job. Yeah, maybe that's it. Wait, I can fly? I don't know, that was just coming back down. Oh my god, he's having a bad day. Oh my god, he's having a very bad day. Oh 
Uh. <laughs> I'm doing so badly, oh my god. These controls are really weird, by the way. It's not just me sucking at games, honestly. Wah! Game over. Well, I get to restart from there. I guess we can test to see whether save states are a thing as well. Okay, we start from here. Yeah, we do get save states, just like, just like before. Let's see if we can do this a bit better this time. I'll show you my skills on Raiden after this, if you want to see me actually do well at a game. Because Raiden on the PC Engine is probably my favourite shoot em up. ignore that one. I was already taking damage anyway. Alright, time to fight the skyscraper demon. Ah, why? As soon as the buildings start coming down, you can't really jump. You can't jump. See me just like sliding off there. Yay! Who's that? Okay, story time. Great, is this where I can find a new job? Uh, hello? Are you doing the interview? Uh, yes, what skills do you have? I'm good at falling off very high buildings and still living somehow. Great, you're hired! Uh, what do you want me to do? First, you see that weird blue thing there? You gotta jump on it. Great job. Um, now, pretend you're in a completely different game. I wonder if there is an actual good explanation for anything that's happening in this. It just seems a bit random. And there's not much going on in this level either. It's very weirdly easy. Ah, almost got crushed there. There is actually a much more polished third game in this series that's on the PC Engine CD. Which obviously you can't play on the on the pocket, but it might be cool if I can get the YouTube funds to buy the PC Engine uh, proper PC Engine analog system. What is going on with this floor? I feel like they just throw in random obstacles around. Oh, I died. Uh, if that's back to the start, I'll play something else, but... Oh no, it's okay, it starts from there. Right, we'll have one more go. I was going to check out the other adapters as well, but I might save that for next time and use a bit of time this evening to get a bit of a head start on this week's video. Oh, 
or just go and play Final Fantasy for a bit. I've been really enjoying it so far. further than I did last time? I think so. Or maybe not quite. I remember that bit. I don't know, we still have to go through these annoying walls. Ah, yeah, this is where we died, wasn't it? Oh, uh, I can't dodge them properly. Yay! Okay, we made a bit of progress. Can we destroy these? Ah! Uh, I don't think you can. Maybe that one. No. Ah, uh, okay. Right, that's enough of that game. Let's check out one more. Let's end on Raiden, because I know I love that one. There is a CD version of Raiden as well, which I... Oh, that's got quite hot, actually. Just, if you feel the back of that, that's actually heated up quite a lot. Hopefully that's not an issue. Uh, right, let's check out how this plays on here. This is a really difficult version of the game as well. I'm not just saying that, so you're more impressed when I get through it. Let's see if I can figure out the right buttons, because this one should have turbo fire, which I'm guessing is X and Y on here. Yeah. It may look simple, but there's so much uh, to memorize in these levels. And the fun thing about this is the power-up system is really good. So you got like homing missiles, we've got regular missiles, and then you've got your regular red shot, which is like the normal bullets, and then you've also got a blue one. Oh my god! Which is like a laser power-up as well. Uh, I'm going to start again, that was terrible. Pretend that didn't happen. When I got this one in Japan, along with my PC engine, I actually set it up in the hotel room and played it all night when I got it. I was so excited. That was the first time I went back in 2014. Ten years ago. So I've had this for ten years now. It's crazy. It's been ten... Oh my god, I'm really not doing very well. I can usually get through like the first two levels without getting hit. Try and keep it as the red power up. There's an interesting way the bullets work in this game when you've got the turbo fire on. The closer you are to the enemy, the faster you can hit them and the more damage you actually do. I don't even think I'm going to get to a boss at this rate. It has been a while since I played it. Okay, let's try the laser instead. It has an annoying sound effect, so I apologise about this. Oh my god. And the bullets are so fast. Yes, I think I may have been bragging a little bit soon. I promise I am good at this. Normally. 
I'll we'll swap back to the red one. Um, there is a secret here, if you keep shooting that spot. There you go. Get a fairy to come out, and that means that when you die, she actually uh, replenishes some of the uh, weapons that you had. Which is useful. And you can hide behind these bits that lift up. Ah! Oh wow, actually game over. There you go. At least the fairy's there now, look. She'll give you a bunch of things back. I tried playing some of the newer riding games and I really don't like them as much as this one for some reason. Okay, here's the first boss. What I usually do is go right up close like this and get in as many hits here before it starts attacking and then start backing off about now. And then there's going to be two of them. There's one. And then back down to avoid that fire. Ah! I'm back to my crappy little pea shooter attack. The CD version is apparently a little bit easier. Um, and when I played that, I actually got a lot further. I actually got all the way to space for the first time, and I didn't even know you end up in space in this game. No. I don't think I'm going to get past them now. No, I haven't got a very good power up. Maybe the laser's better if you've only got two. Oh well, let's see what we can do. I'm dead. <laughs> I'm dead. Let's go back to the start and see if we can get there with a fully powered up ship. Hey, Mr. Neutral. Yeah, Raiden is... I'm, I'm going to restart, actually. Raiden is possibly my favourite shoot -em off ever, so the fact that I'm doing so badly is really embarrassing because I love this game so much. Alright, let's try again. Pretend none of that happened. The best th uh, wrong one. Okay, we'll try powering up the laser one, even though it has an annoying noise. Uh, I usually think the red one's better, but maybe this is better for the tanks at the start of the stage. Ah, damn it, I've just lost the power-up. If you swap from one colour to the other, you basically lose any of the strength bonus that getting two would pick up. Right, there is the uh, fairy over here somewhere. There she is. Come on! Yeah, there we go. Just managed to free her in time then. Oh no! The power-up ship disappeared. Uh, and then that bit just gets overwhelming if you haven't got any power-ups. Let's try again. We'll get past the first level at least. Come on. Try and get there with a 
fully uh, powered up red laser. And homing missiles. I really wish that Raiden 2 would have been on the PC Engine as well. I think they could have done a great port of that one. Uh, I'm scared now. Ah! Come on! Okay. Get the fairy! Get the power-ups! Yes, that's the best we've done so far. So hide behind this barrier. Okay, we're doing well. Let's get another red one. Come on. Oh, we got a bomb this time. Nice. We might be fully powered up with the red one here then. At this point. Ah! Oh my god. Good job you can shoot that bullet away. One more. Is it going to be another bomb? Oh no, there is another red one. There we go. Look how much spread it's got now. There we go. Basically got the whole screen covered. Let's do this. These tanks stand no chance. Take out all the little flies and watch this. Can I kill him before it even starts? Almost! Uh... There's one down. Let's throw another bomb. We did get an extra one. You want to save some bombs for the later bosses because they can get really, really difficult. I always try and get a bit closer when you got the chance as well. To get some extra hits in! Ah! Oh my god, that was close. The bullets in this game, I feel like they move at the perfect speed for this kind of game. Like you've just got enough chance to be able to dodge them properly. Yay! There we go. I did it without getting hit. Phew. Told you I'm good at this game. Dun, 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 dun. Let's see how far we can get. Uh, I love this game so much. Honestly, I think this is better than any of the Star Soldier games. Not that they're bad, but they're more spectacle, whereas this one is like pure skill. And there's like no downtime, unlike some shooters. Oh, I'm pretty overpowered now though. Yeah, extra homing missiles too. And a bomb to replace the one I used on the boss, nice. The really scary thing is though, as soon as you die once, you basically lose all your strength. So like, there's a really annoying bit uh, over the ocean in level 2, I think. Or level 3, maybe. And I always die at that one bit, and then there's like no chance of recovery. That was a bit close. This bit, if you're fully powered up, you don't even see the enemies coming onto the screen. Yeah, these these boats, later on, these can be really annoying. And the fact that I'm getting points now means that the, uh, the red power-up is the highest it can go, so now we just have to try and hold onto it. Yeah, these tanks are annoying with their fireballs. But if you keep moving from one side to the other, they're pretty easy to dodge. And we've got a whole bunch of homing missiles, look at all this. Right, nearly approaching the next boss, I think. These bees as well, you can't even see them now, but 
Normally, if you're not fully powered up, they can be really problematic too. But now we can just sit back and wait for the se for the section to be done with. All right, here we go. This boss can be horrible, but. Maybe I'll be okay, because I'm fully powered up. I guess you can attempt to... Oh, I'm throwing a bomb. I hate this bit. Oh, I hate this bit so much. Oh, no! So close as well. And now watch, I'm going to come back with no power. Apart from the stuff that the fairy gives me, obviously. Alright, we'll try it with the laser. Now you'll actually see why this boss can be so annoying. No, I'm gonna die now. But let's see how long we can last anyway. Oh my god! Uh, I'm gonna stop firing for a second, let that bomb go past. If they blow up, they basically just fire bullets in every direction. This is the bit I hate. Oh my god, I can never get through that! Uh, Alright. Now look what we've got. We don't even have a fairy to help us this time. Ah, oh, I forgot that side still fires missiles. Alright, I think we've got one more try. I don't know how you can tell how many lives you've got. I think we've got one more. I might try swapping that for a laser just to try something different. Maybe it's good to try and target the the wings first. At least there's less to Oh god damn it. I was gonna say there's less to worry about and then the bullet from the wing hit me. Alright, I think I'm gonna leave the stream there for tonight, guys. Thank you everyone for joining me. Hope you all enjoyed the double bill this week, which was Trip World DX, plus a look at some PC Engine games on the analog pocket. Really enjoyed that. And look forward to the video on Friday where I'm going to be doing something a little bit different and actually talking about my history of developing games and some of the random prototypes that I found. And the reason I'm doing that, let's just pop on camera for a second so I can tell you guys. Um, I found a whole load of my old college like work and stuff as well as some hard drives. And some really early stuff that my nan found when she was clearing out her house. So it's going to be a very personal episode. So I hope you look forward to that. It's going to be an interesting one for me to make. Anyway, thanks for the stream. And I'll be back to playing Act Razor next week, I think. So, bye!